Y'all, I love Texas, but I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> All right, good morning, fellow graduate friends, family members, and faculty members. I am thrilled to be here and honored to be speaking you, to you today. I am a nurse and a corporate manager for a national healthcare system. By all odds, I should be neither. My parents were high school dropouts and I grew up poor in rural Kentucky. We were recipients of welfare and I received free lunches at school. My family also received free cheese and other commodities. The cheese was delicious, but if I never eat canned pork or corned beef hash again, <laughs> it will be too soon. Luckily, my parents wanted an easier life for me and knew education was my way out of poverty. In fact, my daughter who is a doctor and my son who is an IT specialist are one generation from poverty. And that's all because of the power of education. My parents showed up and got involved. They were leaders in PTO, band boosters, and every other school related function my brother and I joined. Their example of volunteer leadership helped shape who I am today. I tell everyone I'm a late bloomer. I graduated at 19 as a registered nurse, how scary is that, <laughs> and did not earn a bachelor's degree until I was 45. I completed my Master of Health Leadership at 51 because I finally believed I was capable. If you're like me, you've had many bosses. I left a job that I was good at after 24 years because of a boss. I finished my graduate degree because of my two leaders that I now report to. They, they are the reason I felt for the first time that I was capable of doing more. To complete my degree, to earn industry certifications, and to speak on the national stage. John Quincy Adams said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader. By this definition, my professional mentors, Meredith and Sheila, who is here today, she traveled to support me, are consummate leaders. Some like to say that people are born leaders. Do you believe that's true or can leaders be made? While certain personality traits are beneficial, leadership skills can be learned. Probably one of the most desirable is emotional intelligence or EQ. Personally, I think our entire population should work on their EQ as the COVID pandemic seems to have developed our rotten parts. <laughs> so what exactly is EQ? EQ allows you to be aware of your emotions as well as those around you. It gives you a better understanding of your team members and how to work effectively with them. I'm going to talk about some of the qualities of an emotionally intelligent leader. The ability to have empathy for others is an important attribute of a great leader, but don't confuse empathy for sympathy. Sympathy is feeling sorry for someone, but empathy seeks to understand from their perspective. I often say that I don't agree with everyone's opinion, but I can almost always understand why they arrived at it. No one experiences life in exactly the same way. It wouldn't it be boring if we did. Leaders must practice self-awareness and know their strengths and weaknesses. They also need to acknowledge past experiences they may bring to any situation. I am very self-aware that I get hangry and know my judgment may be <laughs> skewed when I'm hungry. You can just ask my husband. I've learned not to make big decisions in that moment and to temper my responses to others. Effective communication is paramount to any leader's success. An open door policy is great, but it is not enough to foster excellent communication with your team. You must consciously engage with them frequently and ask questions while listening to their answers to understand, not just to respond. You may be surprised what you learn by listening to their opinions and suggestions. Lastly, the most important leadership quality of all is integrity. Always do the right thing, even when it's hard. Be honest, trustworthy, and reliable. Do not be a finger pointer. If a member of my team makes a mistake, I own it. 
I don't want them to ever be afraid to tell me of an error. We will discuss and plan how to improve our processes so the mistake never happens again. Not to sound trite, but I leave you with this from Robert Ingersoll. We rise by lifting others. I challenge you to be a leader and not a boss. Thank you, WGU, for the outstanding education I received and for the opportunity to speak today.